We gather today on the traditional unceded territory of the Algonquin Anishinaabe Nation. May we dwell on this land with respect and peace. Welcome to worship in the parish of Mississippi Lake, a parish of the Anglican Diocese of Ottawa, firmly planted in and around Lanark County. Worship this week comes to you from St. James Carlton Place, led by the Reverend Pat Blythe. The preacher today is myself, Archdeacon Brian Koch. I will read from Mark's Gospel and offer the sermon. The prayers of the people are led by Allison Wark from St. George's Clayton. Our musicians today are Michael Costello and Fred and Lynn Meredith, with production assistance by Helen Vandermeer. We listen now as God's Word is proclaimed among us. The Lord be with you. And also with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus came to his hometown, and his disciples followed him. On the Sabbath, he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astounded. They said, where did this man get all this? What is this wisdom that has been given to him? What deeds of power are being done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary and brother of James and Joseph and Judas and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. Then Jesus said to them, Prophets are not without honor except in their hometown and among their own kin and in their own house. And he could do no deed of power there except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and cured them. And he was amazed at their unbelief. Then he went about among the villages, teaching. He called the twelve and began to send them out, two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He ordered them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals, and not to put on two tunics. He said to them, wherever you enter a house, stay there until you leave the place. If any place will not welcome you and they refuse to hear you, as you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that all should repent they cast out many demons and anointed with oil many who were sick and cured them. The Gospel of Christ. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. The movement of Jesus turns a corner today in Mark's Gospel. Up until now, Jesus and his band of missionary disciples have been unstoppable. They go from place to place, healing and setting people free from their demons. Jesus speaks about the nearing kingdom of God in terms that real people can understand. Farm workers, lamps and bushel baskets, mustard seeds, these are the words Jesus uses. He doesn't use $50 words or wrap his teaching in a protective legal shell, but speaks plain truth in plain language that the folk of the Galilee can understand. And this doesn't make him any friends among the establishment. But that doesn't seem to stop him. Jesus stills a storm while crossing the lake. And in the silence and stillness of the waves, with the howling wind echoing in their ears, 
his disciples offer words that we and as readers and hearers of Mark's gospel are meant to be asking ourselves. Who is this man that even the wind and the sea obey him? But here, today, in his own hometown, Jesus appears to run into a stumbling block that he cannot overcome. Unbelief. Rather than bring Jesus those who are sick and dying, the people of Nazareth bring their preconceived notions of who Jesus is. It's hard to be a healer when all people see is the fatherless son of Mary. It's hard to set people free from demons when you're held captive by your family history. It's hard to be a teacher of deep truth when all people see is a carpenter. The storyteller here walks it back a little bit and Jesus finds he can heal a few sick people. Nothing as dramatic as raising a girl child from the dead, but you know, it's something. His words up until now have been, go in peace. Your faith has made you well. Some faith in Nazareth, but a whole lot of unfaith. There's, there's something instructive here about what faith looks like as we consider what unfaith looks like. Faith allows people to be healed because they come with an almost innocent knowledge. They have heard of Jesus, but don't necessarily know him. What they know is their own need. Their desire to be restored to wholeness and brought into community. What they know is their daughter is sick and dying. Their brother is out of his mind and high all the time, or depressed and barely moving. That's what they know. Who Jesus' parents are and what station he holds isn't really important to those who have faith. I wonder if this episode in Mark's gospel is included here because it happens to the church from time to time. Every now and then, it feels like we get stuck. Things are going great. The mission is a roaring success, and then poof, it all just stops working. Unbelief sets in. People talk about us rather than listen to the words we preach. Isn't that the church that used to run residential schools? Aren't all church people just in it to look good to their friends and neighbors? People take offense at what they think they know about a church, and everything comes to a grinding halt. It happens. And there are kernels of truth in among all the hot air puffing up what people say, blowing it out of proportion. And what gets missed is the real truth. That the primate of the Anglican Church of Canada apologized for the church's role in residential schools in 1993 doesn't make the news cycle today. That the Anglican Church raised $25 million to settle our share of ret retributions for those who were harmed. That's not what people talk about. And unlike Jesus, we have a lot to make up for. So, well, maybe a little time in purgatory is what our church needs to fully realize that we are called to preach the nearing kingdom of God, not ourselves. 
in Mark's gospel. It's what happens next, I think, that is Mark's good news to the church. To those who feel like they're stuck in a land of unbelief and held back by their own past. Jesus moves on with his mission, what he came to do. He goes out to the smaller places and keeps teaching about the nearing kingdom of God. He innovates. He takes his chosen 12, pairs them up, and sends them out to do what he himself has shown them to do. In a Bible study, we could learn some of the ins and outs of Jesus' missionary strategy, taking a staff but no supplies and no cash, wearing sandals but no extra clothes. Let's just leave it today that Jesus' strategy is about depending on the hospitality of others. When Jesus sends you out, you and your partner stay with people who will have you. You eat what they eat. You live where they live. And where they don't welcome you, you move on. And in this way, Jesus' mission continues. Healing and wholeness is restored. Those who are held back by demons are set free and returned to their loved ones. You go out and find the faith. And that's where the mission picks up again. That kind of stuff may or may not be the missionary strategy we need for today. And Jesus' own strategy changes from time to time because how we get to the goal is not really important. What is important to Jesus and what should be most important to us is proclaiming the nearing kingdom of God and finding it in people's lives. Finding the faithful among those who have real needs. Finding the real need for healing and liberation in and among ourselves gathering us all in, transforming our lives, and sending us out again. The mission of Jesus continues today, even if it looks different, and even if it needs to look different again tomorrow. As long as the world God loves still has faithful people Jesus needs to find, heal, set free, and send out, we have work to do. And we cannot be stopped by unbelief or by a past that haunts us. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for the peace of the world. Lord, grant that we may live together in justice and faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for this country, and especially for Queen Elizabeth, the Governor General, the Prime Minister, and all in authority. The Lord help them to serve this people according to his holy will. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church of Papua New Guinea, In the Canadian cycle of prayer, we pray for the Right Reverend David Greenwood, Bishop and the clergy and the people of the Diocese of Athabasca. And we pray for Shane, our Bishop, for the churches, ministries, and people of the Diocese of Ottawa. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for children and young people. The Lord guide their growth and development development. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, hear hear our our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for the sick, especially remembering Isabel, Wayne, Julie, Al, Pat, 
Joan, Marion, Dan, Janet, Isabel, Joe, Michaela, Cindy, John, and any others you wish to pray for silently or aloud this morning. The Lord deliver them and keep them in his love. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Let us pray for all who are condemned to exile, prison, harsh treatment, or hard labor for the sake of justice and truth. The Lord support them and keep them steadfast. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We remember the prophets, apostles, martyrs, and all who have been witness to the gospel. The Lord direct our lives in the same spirit of service and sacrifice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Amen. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. of heaven and earth, receive our sacrifice of praise and strengthen us for the perfect freedom of your service. Through our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ has taught us, let us pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Dear friends, wherever you may be, receive Christ in communion with the saints and the gathering of God's people, unseen yet present with us now. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ you, you have, have put, put your life into our hearts. hearts. Now, now we put our lives into your hands. hands. Take, Take us, renew us, and remake us. What, what we have been is past. What, what we shall be through you still awaits us. Lead us on. Take, Take us, us with, with you. In, in your name we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Peace of the Lord, which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go forth into the world, rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Thank you for joining us for worship today. We welcome you to join us again next week. You can find us on Facebook at the Parish of Mississippi Lake and at St. James Carlton Place. Visit our website, www.stjamescarltonplace.ca, for more information. <laughs>